Sit with me, Danny G, a podcast where we come together to connect, to network, and to share stories. We'll dive deep into conversation with other artists, tattooers, entrepreneurs, and some leaders of our community, learning how their success, like their tattoos, were earned and not given. So come and sit with me and listen to who our next guest will be. everybody. Welcome to Sit With Me, Danny G. And our next guest, well, our very first guest is going to be local boy from Kailua, a professional tattoo artist of over 14 years, a father and a husband, the owner of Sundance Tattoo in Makaha, and someone I am honored to call my friend, Bud Nick. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> me, <laughs> B-U-D. B-U-D, all right. Yeah, it's good That's to be here. I know, Thank right? <laughs> good. It's like been so long and yeah. I am so stoked to have you as my first guest. Thank you. It's an um, honor. Thank you, yeah. It's an honor to even sit with you, I swear. Um, a lot of people, I just want to jump right into it. I feel yeah. like a lot of people don't know, but we apprenticed mm-hmm. around the same time. Yep. and. Fuck, that was 14 years ago. That was <laughs> awesome. Crazy, right? Yeah. And it's so, so amazing uh, to see how far you've come, but I kind of want you to share a little bit with us about kind of like how you got into the apprenticeship. Um, I believe we were both in Kaneohe. Yeah. So um, how you got into that, a little bit of like if you were always an artist or like you, did you just plan on tattooing? Just run us through a little bit of that. Okay. Well, Yeah. Those were good times. <laughs> we, we had a lot of fun. I'm super thankful that I got to have someone like you there, you know, who was so passionate about it and, like, really pushed me to, like, take it more serious. Like, oh, I, I wanted to you. say that first. But, oh, thanks. Yeah. So, for me, it all started, um, you know, first I lived at this, this house called the Duplex of Doom. In Kaneohe, and uh, <laughs> this girl Madonna I was married to my friend Ben. Was starting to tattoo with Big Island Mike, oh, and yeah. and Wando okay. from um, in in uh, Waikiki at South Pacific Tattoo, and I just was super pumped on it and and wanted to really like be a part of it just because Mike and I had known Mike for a long time through skateboarding and he's a BMXer and. Anyway, I started hanging around there all the time in South Pacific and Waikiki and Wando. He's he was a hard guy to be around, this old biker guy, you know, crazy. <laughs> but uh, he really liked me for some reason. I don't know why. Probably because that's how I was back then too. It's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> so uh, you know, it was cool. There was a bar behind the shop, at Arnold's, that opened at like freaking ten o'clock, like right when we got there, and so it was kind of nuts. I would drink all day long, and with me drinking wasn't just drinking; it was drugs. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. I like drugs, so I even <laughs> could, I could tell even back then, like fuck, man, this is not a great place for me to like advance in any way, shape, or form, or even just stay out of jail. You know, like it was pretty wild over there so I long story short I, I came I started thinking like what how can I be closer to home and learn how to tattoo so I hit up Tim good rich my friend from skateboarding too and um, you know he, he said yeah let's do it so I started doing that with him over here and that's how I met you yeah and, <laughs> and uh, Eddie Diaz you know and um, I, I really and you know, Aloha Tattoo had always been a really special place for me just because of... Growing up in Kailua, growing yeah. Growing up in Kailua. Everybody was the got only, their first yeah, right. tattoo, our first piercing. Yeah, <laughs> and when I was little, like elementary school days, they opened Kailua Ramp. And uh, so we would ride bike or catch bus from, you know, like Kalaheo side to Kailua and go skate. And we'd always go to Aloha Tattoo and fucking go in there with our skateboards and like try and not get kicked out and look through the portfolios to see the titties and all the other stuff, you know, and, and uh, just all the cool designs, really, you know, so it was cool to be a part of it, you know, and Uncle Andy actually gave me my first tattoo, and Andy Deaton, and and uh, later Leonard had shaded it in, so to be a part of that legacy was really special. Right, yeah. And uh, 
yeah and then you know meeting you and like i said it really was like oh this is these, this is like how I, like these people really want to be tattooers and that so do i yeah, yeah exactly right right that's what it's all about that passion right. for the art and then i broke my leg and i couldn't work right like oh, God, I mean- stuff. <laughs> yeah so that was like really kept me in the shop more you know yeah i remember that but like yeah that, that's how i ended up over there with you guys. Right, with us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then so we were there apprenticing, and I remember, um, so I know if we were, you were talking about you partied a lot and you drank, and with the drinking came drugs. And I don't know if it was just me being kind of like naive or whatever, but I, to be honest, I really didn't even know you had a problem or like you struggled with anything. Yeah. So I, I don't know, I think it was just like me being in the shop and we were just like, drawing and everything and i i never oh everybody you know everybody i never even kind of thought like oh shit someone has a drug problem somebody whatever um so when you actually kind of you you went to rehab yeah right so yeah. if i can say that like yeah, yeah you, no totally you know while, while we were practicing sure. and yeah. i i remember that and i remember thinking like oh shit yeah. like fuck where's but i was like where's bud yeah. and then they're like bud's like but I had to go to rehab for like just for a little bit, da da da. And I was like, "What the fuck? Yeah. Where's my, where's my fucking and partner I here? Like, yeah. I was by myself with you know with them, and <laughs> yeah. fucking had to yeah, do this weird. shit on my own. And that was cool too. But like, man, yeah, I missed you during that time. How yeah. was? If you want to talk a little bit of your yeah. struggle with kind of like, yeah. I know you so, always told me that art saved you. So yeah, for sure, like. You know, but I don't. I wasn't like chronic or anything. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, easily, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, I never know? thought I'd be like that. I was just a never... party guy. You know, I love to party. I love to drink. I love to snort cocaine, and I love to stay up all night <laughs> oh, and shit. fucking draw weird shit on on weird things. And you know, so and j- 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 that lifestyle. I started, you know, drinking and doing drugs like that when I was sixteen. You know, in high school, I hung out with all my older friends and. And by the time, like, tattooing was coming into my life, you know, I was, that was, like, what who I was, who I, who I thought I was, you know, and I'd, I'd was, grown yeah, up doing exactly. it, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then, you know, for me, it wasn't just rehab, you know, um, I didn't do, like, this 12-step stuff, you know what I mean? Like, what, what changed me was seeing, you know, Andy dead in front of me, you know, that, that was... And knowing how I had a connection to that, you know what I mean? Right. As mm-hmm. I brought him there and I bought the drugs that did it. And, you know, my friend Andy was, he was like as best of a friend as you could possibly have. Yeah. And, uh, he had two little daughters, you know, and it fucked me up, you know? Like, it, it, it made me, like, say to myself, like, like, I can't do this anymore, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got to stop now. And and that was that was it, you know? Mm-hmm. It was enough for me. I knew that I needed to, like, I couldn't go back to the tattoo shop and just, like, forget about what happened. Like, I had to, like, do something, like, throw myself. It, it was almost like punishment for myself. Like, mm-hmm. and not only that, but, like, a break from, like, the questions and... I knew we were coming with like what had happened with right. like you know we, we both overdosed and and they, they could bring me back and they couldn't bring him back and it's like everybody wants to know about it everybody wants to talk about it everybody, I don't want to I don't want to I want to just go someplace and work on myself and uh, so yeah I threw myself in Hinamalka and I was there for like sixty eight days or something and not that long but it was enough for me to like fucking get my head out of my ass Mm -hmm. and like say and and get a plan you know without any distractions it was like you're surrounded by guys that are gnarly criminals or you know real fucking drug addicts like me i never that was the first time i ever shot heroin i shot cocaine like i don't know five times before that and, and and I just said, fuck it, that morning I wanted to try heroin. And we That's had just... so insane. And we just shot up a bunch of cocaine right before that, and, and it just killed us, you know? But... Um, That's so heavy. Right. So I needed to get, like, a, a head start, I guess, like, without, like, just depending on myself. I knew if I locked myself in there, 
I was ready to take it serious right. and really think about tattoo and, and like this plan and like it was awesome to have friends like you who would bring me. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was like, whatever you need, I'm there. Fuck yeah! To like, practice line drawings and paper to draw on and yeah. paint on, and like it got me through it, you know. And then when I came out, it was like pff, I hit the ground running. You know? Yeah, and I knew, I knew it, it was like it was amazing. It was like this giant light was just like shining, like just tattoo was just like come here. I will fucking. Exactly the I will device. save you. I will yeah. take care of you. Like, yeah. and I could and, feel it. It uh, was, yeah, it was exactly. real. Yeah, real magic. That's the yeah, real exactly magic, right? That's what we talk about all the time. I know me and Javi always say like, what the tattoo gods are real, and the tattoo like the magic of tattooing is real, and and whatever you give into this craft, it will give into give out to you. Yeah. Like, so that you were still practicing line drawings, and you're still drawing, and you're yeah. still kind of like finding that as your way of expressing yourself yeah. I think that was like the best thing you could have done in rehab too as, right. as far as also like kind of really thinking about your life and yeah. thinking really what you want from everything you know yeah. so that was fucking that was a wild time yeah that was rough that yeah. was crazy but you know? I mean but it was, you see that and was, instead of going down another depressing yeah. rabbit hole right. of like pitting yourself or right. putting yourself into like right. fucking like you know you're beating yourself up like you did the opposite which i think a lot of people need to hear and a lot of people need to see that you not only this you you created such a beautiful life now i mean an amazing life just all you gotta do is just do the right thing you know what i mean and just kind of work right yeah exactly but you gotta work hard and be passionate about it right yeah and so that was one thing i know that we both apprentice under a Americana, a tra- traditional um, tattooer, and that's something where I've always loved, I've always appreciated. I know that that is now kind of, you would say, your style of tattooing, right? Yeah. I like to try and leave the America. Kind of, yeah, what is that? Okay. <laughs> They kind of put their self right? in Right? Why do you think so? Yeah, they, traditional tattooing. Traditional, yeah, traditional like, Timmy tattooing. Taps, he, he just made this post a while ago, and it was like, why Why? Why is everybody why calling it that? that? I know, right? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Why from, did I fucking call I it that? God <laughs> damn it. I'm not trying to talk <laughs> to you about it. Don't tell me this is okay. what I need. That's okay. why. All right. <laughs> so, well, I'm around all these young kids. Yeah. Come on. You got to tell me. You got to be like, come on. Get your shit straight, Danielle. No, you got your shit straight, that's for sure. Yeah, so, but, like, like, you you love this style all the way from the beginning, and then yeah, you kind actually, of was, like... Yeah, I, I think it really started from my dad. Like, my dad, he's got some tattoos, you know, and, uh, but there's this one that he has on his hip, and it's, like, up high on his hip, but it's, like, no son gets it, and when I was <laughs> little, I was, like, four or five years old, and we were, like, taking a shower after the beach or something, you know, and I was just, like... Oh, what is that? You know, he's all tattoo. You know, I was like, but his other ones didn't look like that. It was up there, and the color was in there. It was this bulldog, a USMC oh, bull- devil dog. You know, <laughs> the green helmet, the right, red yeah. mouth, and the fucking black shading. I was just like, wow, that's like. How many uh, have you tattooed that on oh, someone yeah. yet? Yeah. How yeah. many have you tattooed? Oh, hundreds. <laughs> you know? But you know, actually, I I was more close to the army base when I was working. You know, for most of my years before I opened Sundance, it was, you know. Oh, in Wahiwa, right? Right. Yeah. So I didn't get to do a lot of devil dogs, but. They like a like different type of. Yeah, because that's yeah. a USMC. Isn't it? Yeah. Army is yeah. Isn't it funny how like they all have, but they all have their moral tattoos. Yeah. That, like, yeah, it's cool. Really. Over here, yeah, we have a lot of the Marine. Right. Because of Kanye and Marine. Mm-hmm. So. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I know when you walk into your shop, it's like full-on traditional yeah i love that i just like the color and the, it's always just been so appealing to me and just fun and tough and right like, have you ever my dad was like you know like that, that and all <laughs> kind of, like you know he was a tough guy and so it was like the like uncles like that i always thought were cool you know they had yeah. those they had kind, the traditional you know? tattoos yeah. yeah for sure have you ever felt like you wanted to kind of try a different style or you're like, no, traditional is my... Well, go-to. I feel like I've, I've always tried to be real, um, you know, well-rounded because I love money. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> right? And speak about yeah. how our apprenticeship, you have to do yeah. everything. Yeah. Right? Everything. And, and I, that's what I really love about street shop tattooing. It's like, yeah, okay. There's so much. It's like whatever you're into, that's cool. You, that's what you paint when you're not tattooing. Or that's what you try and get people to get tattooed but you you it's like you got to be good at all the other stuff too you know and yeah. and because i got to do so much like different styles i really like fell in love with like like cholo style you know like the old like good time charlie good jack time charlie, yeah. and like chuco moreno like like that style is just fucking so cool right, to so me it's so sick i know you i know? love that style too it's simple it's <clears> not <throat> like it's simple. It's just like traditional real in a sense. It's just the basics. It's like how little bit can you use to make something look so powerful and cool, you know? Right, exactly. And that's fucking, that's what it's all about to me as far as like a design goes, you know? And then what you want, yeah. I always think I put too much stuff, you know? <laughs> Afterwards, sometimes I mean like, I know my work sometimes I over detail shit like yeah. I love detail but I know I'm so drawn to that simplicity like yeah. you said where that tattoo is just it speaks so bold by yeah. itself right yeah. I fucking love that stuff yeah. too do you um do you feel like it's kind of like it's always been popular or do you feel like now that type of tattoos are kind of getting it's kind of I hate to use the word trending, but I mean, like, yeah, yeah. do you feel like more so now people are coming to get these tattoos again? Yeah, I, I, th I think so. Um, are you, like, feel, it never died? I don't feel like, I feel like I've pretty much been Always. consistently doing it, you know what I mean? Um, I feel like now I'm luckier because I've been doing it a while that um, I get to do it more. Maybe people are, like, come to see me sometimes for that right, specifically, yeah. you know, but... As far as just, like, walking in a tattoo shop, I, I mean, people still get it, you know? And they always kind of got it, right? Yeah. And, and it's it just, that's why it's, it's, it just works so good, you know? It, through time, people see timeless. it. Timeless. Timeless. Yeah. It, it holds its, its longevity for forever with that style and coolness, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, but definitely now so it's trendy you know it seems like it goes like up, up in down. waves it's you so know crazy right I depending know. on who's famous getting it, tattooed yeah. or whatever you know what they're right? getting tattooed i mean i've always been around it too so for me like traditional traditional has always been a thing and right. i've always loved it too yeah and then i see people oh i want fine line i want this and that and then all of a sudden a bunch of people are like hi do you have flash? Uh, yeah. Like, like, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's kind of crazy because I'm like, oh, dang, I haven't worked in like a street shop in a while. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, right. <laughs> like yeah. hey, what's going on? You know, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. But I, obviously I have my own kind house though. It's yeah. like people want the new old But you thing. came up doing shit off the walls all yeah, the time. I know. You know that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I love that. that. You know, to me, it's like, there's so many different kinds of tattooing now. It seems like, you know, and it's cool. Like, <laughs> it is it's, cool. It, I, I'm not dogging on it at all. I, I really, I, I think it's cool, you know, but like this kind, that's the kind for me. I, I love it. I love like the community. I love driving to work and seeing my tattoo on the guy. I like going surfing on Macaw <laughs> Beach and seeing my friends with their tattoos. And, right. And it's the biggest honor in the world. And, and um, you know, the street shop thing is just, fuck, you don't ever need an appointment. You know, just yeah, what do you no, mean? That's the like, I just love that. come here. You know, like just come. you can make one if you have a day that works better for you. But we got somebody to do it any time for you. You know, like that's so sick. I just like that. That's that's so that's what I try to do with Sundance. Right. So. Yeah. So let's talk about Sundance. I remember. So how long were you apprenticing, and then how long did you uh, tattoo before you were like, I think I want to own my own shop. Yeah. So my apprenticeship was kind of weird, you know, right? like it was like a long <laughs> time. It was like uh, on and off again, kind of in and out of trouble kind of thing, trying to do it, you know, probably like three years, I would say until, oh, you know, sure. um, okay. about the, the, you know, 2010. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. So, because right? that's when I was, right. I must have been at the last year that you, you were, were finishing. <laughs> you were, yeah. You were done. You were, and, um, uh, 
Well, you were on your way out. Yeah. And yeah. I was still doing it. But, and then I worked shit till what, 2018. So, you yeah. know, for Tim, you know, I was with him and did all that for. And you were tattooing in Kailua and in Wahiwa or? First it was Kaneohe. Oh, yeah, the Kaneohe. And then a little Kailua. And then he, he put me out in Wahiwa, which was really a good thing for me. Yeah. Like, I didn't have, like, my friends. I grew up in Kailua, you know what I mean? It was, it was just, like, paying clients, yeah, paying. you know, <laughs> coming in every day. And, it, oh, bro, it was, like, throw me to the sharks. It was, like, I, I, but I was ready, you know what I mean? Right. And, and yeah. they knew it. And, and I, uh, so, yeah, over there it was cool. And then I went to Waikiki when he opened uh, Aloha Tattoo 3. And then... Oh, you went to the Waikiki shop? Yeah. And then oh, I, didn't know I that. ran that for him. And then and then I went back to Wahiwa oh, okay. for another, like, five years. And then 2018, we had uh, my first son. And, and yeah. I was like, ah, I think I got to do my own thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's crazy how becoming a parent kind yeah. of puts things into a different perspective. Big time, yeah. Right? How was, was that? Yeah, it was it was trippy just because, you know, I, I, I had moved to Macaw in 2016. And was this because you moved there just on your own or because you met Malu? No, no, no. I, I moved there because uh, I was just getting tired of living at my friend's house. You know <laughs> what I mean? I had saved a lot of money in cash and my mom was also kind of like I think waiting to see if I would stay off of drugs and shit mm. for like five years or something and and I asked her you know ma I got some cash like mm -hmm. you like let's get a house again yeah. you know yeah. like because my parents got divorced we lost our house or you know, lose it but she sold it you know right. I mean? so um, it was an opportunity for me and her to do something together and for me to like get some roots yeah. like yeah. a piece yeah, of property that and, and that's really I kind of no offense Kailu I love Kailu with all my heart you know what <laughs> I mean but I had, it had changed so much and I just wanted to like kind of go as far away as I could from it and just not be away from Hawaii and Macau was it's weird how the West side gives afford. you that right yeah. too and it took a while you know for us to be able to land the spot that that they would give us a loan for and and that I, I liked and I wanted, because my mom wasn't going to live there, it was just going to be me, and then she would come and, you know, stay whenever, she was living in California at the time, and, uh, she, you know, she just would come and stay with me sometimes, you know, throughout yeah, the year, and then, and then I met Malu, like, a year later, and then, yeah, shit happened real fast. <laughs> You guys yeah. fell in love. Yeah. I know. So another Mom tattoo. So, she's so great. Yeah. 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 Another what? Tattoo blessing, you know, just yeah. she walked into the tattoo shop. Really? It, yeah. Oh, and this was what tattoo shop? When Aloha you tattoo. In, oh, yeah. yeah. In Waikiki? No, in Wahiwa. Oh, in Wahiwa. Yeah. Okay. She came in with her best friend. Oh, yeah, because she's a West Side girl, yeah. No, she's she? Hockey Poo. Oh. East Side, yeah. Oh, really? No, oh, okay. she's not West Side oh, shit. girl. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> both of you guys are yeah, out side, there. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, that was hard for her because, yeah. you know, her spot is like. That the would be hard for me, spot. too. Right. To leave that, <laughs> to come to Macaw in the hood. Wow. Nice oh, I didn't know her. that. Okay. But we've, like, uh, jumping back, I, I found that piece of property and that's how I ended up out there, you know. And, it was, and I'm so glad it's been nothing but, like, the most amazing people and support and like if it wasn't for like my macaw and why and i family like i couldn't have done sundance really yeah yeah I so so you decided to open up a shop yeah and you found a little spot in macaw. yeah so well it's in why and i and okay yeah it's like six minutes away from, from macaw, <laughs> But there's this guy Polani that was out there, and uh, he he was tat he had a tattoo shop in this building that mm -hmm. I always thought, damn, that is a great I spot Polani. for it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Polani Fernandez, yeah. and um, and I always thought, oh, good for him, you know, that's the killer. And when I first moved out there, the place was pumping. I would go to work in the morning at 10 a.m., come home at like 9:30, 10, drive past both times, had people. I was like, it was inspiring to see yeah. like. 
why am I getting tattooed? And this guy who I knew too from the convention, who's a super sweet guy, was making money in his home. Like, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's just exciting. I like that kind of stuff. Right, and right. so a year goes by and then it kind of wasn't open as much, you know? And then it, for almost like a, well, I don't know, a pretty long time, there wasn't any thing going on there but the sign was still up and I always told myself like wow like if that sign ever comes down you know it was around the time Molly was pregnant and I was getting ready to kind of do my thing this is you your know? first with your first yeah. yeah and it was like uh, just driving so far from Macaw and, and, and then so this one night I was coming home and the sign was down and I told myself okay about just call Polani and see what's up so I called him and he was like so helpful he was yeah. like look I'll make the call to the landlord, like, if you want the spot, just, like, and I was like, I don't want that spot. I want the other spot <laughs> side of the building. There was a for rent sign oh, on it. It was so like the sign came the down his sign, side. and then okay. the, the sign that came up on the other side of the building, yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. like, oh, my God, this is, like, perfect scenario for right. me. Yeah. And um, I called the guy the next day, and he said, bring the money. <laughs> I said, okay. okay. I was shitting. I was I like. I know. I remember you called me. Yeah. <laughs> I was shitting. I was like, bro, I didn't even talk to, you know, hadn't talked to Tim yet. And, 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 um, you know, but I knew that if I didn't jump on it, mm-hmm. somebody else would, yeah. or I wouldn't do it. And it really felt like a, the, the fire was, it was lit for a reason. And, and me and Tim, we have a great relationship. You know what I mean? I, we have total mutual respect, I feel. And, and I knew that when I, at how I was doing it, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. As far away from anything he was doing, it couldn't be that bad. And <laughs> when I told him, he the first thing he asked was where, and I told him why not. He was like, "Fuck yeah, give me a hug." You know? I was like, All right. <laughs> that sounded just like him. <laughs> so you know, like exact words. I was, I felt, you know, <clears throat> okay. Now it's time to like, holy shit. Yeah. Now yeah. I gotta leave. And open a shop, and I was like, okay, you know. But you know what was cool is like, I had been collecting tattoo art for so long, and had just piles of it, paintings, you know. And of that my was just own. on your own, yeah. Yeah. Like with no, you just did yeah. it on your own. And then I, all of a sudden, I had this cool place to put it all, and then, and then I just kept adding to it and adding to it, yeah, and now it's pretty. It's so blown out. it's <laughs> blown out. Like if you ever get a chance to go to Sundance in why night it's beautiful because it's just flash on your ceiling <laughs> on your wall everywhere yeah it's amazing thank you yeah so how i mean some of that was like your own you painted that right yeah a lot yeah, of it a lot of a, it a lot of it right. my paintings and a lot of it's my friends and, yeah gifts and, and stuff that i bought and, yeah that's you know, so sick there's some prints too there's a lot of prints you know yeah. but it's like it's all old stuff i i just when we walked in there, I was like, holy shit, this is so yeah. sick. It's kind of, kind of ridiculous at Right? Points, People but. are going to want to see it. Yeah. So, so you opened Sundance, and, and yeah, like, I remember that too, like, the first feeling. Like, what was your feeling of being like, all right, now I'm not just a tattoo artist. You're an actual business owner. Yeah. And uh, the responsibility to come with that, like, how, how was that? Yeah. It was, it was a lot, you know. It was a trip. Um, I felt like, and I still feel like if I'm going to do something on my own, like I got to be able to do it on my own. You know, I don't want to ever have to depend on a worker or anything. Mm -hmm. So that was like the scariest part. You keeping your own lights on. Yeah. Right. Like Mm -hmm. this has to work with just the BUD. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's it. Like if it all, sh- you know what I mean? If, if, if you can't, I mean, I have to just be able to do this on my own and then whatever else is extra. You know what right. I mean? Because all I could really depend on is yourself. You know what I mean? I have this new family and I just kept growing. You know what I mean? Right. We had yeah. you know, having two more. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I could always like handle it myself. Mm-hmm. I, and I think that was probably the most nervous thing it was just, am I going to be able to do this? Right. Pay for my mortgage and my fucking, the rent here and electric. You got two of everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, that was the only thing I was really tripping on, I think. And then, 
it's like you're like we were saying about the tattoo gods is they're real and it's just if you show that you're just here to work you're here to be a service fucking guy like don't turn shit away you know it's, if you're a street shop like me like you do everything and it's gonna keep coming so if you're you just gotta just put your head down and believe that you know it's gonna work right if you, you can't even think about it if it's not gonna work mm -hmm. you have to there is you don't think about that right, exactly. whatever the fuck you're gonna do exactly. that's the last thing you think about exactly right do you feel like i mean driving down there it's such a long drive of like god this is kind of and like it's so far from everywhere else like do you feel like a lot of your clients like who are they are they the people of the community are they like who's coming into your shop uh, kind of, kind of i get um uh, just like three different people i get the local people the community yeah and the people like um i still have some military guys like because i put so much out in wahiwa i feel like that luckily yeah they see it right? that, that style like nice. you know so i get like to do a lot of my stuff a lot of the community though is really like getting attached to like that style of traditional mixed with like you know their own ideas which mm -hmm. um, oh, is so cool and then surprisingly you know there's like some tourists too you know? yeah that's yeah, what yeah, i wanted like to Airbnbs ask like is there shit? tourists out there yeah that are coming in for a tattoo that's way so more crazy. like when i opened the place that money was never even yeah uh, it's so far <laughs> like i wouldn't even think about it even like just coming up in waiwa wasn't a tourist town you know what i mean i've yeah. always kind of worked in the hood you know like <laughs> in more like rougher areas That's true. like we're not in waikiki like i never no. knew how i felt like to work in waikiki ever. so for them to walk in and and now it's so cool because we just made five years and I'll see this. Yeah. They'll come back every year. You know, That's they come for their sick. Hawaii vacation and, and they come see us. You're yeah, creating it's cool. a little, like, yeah. a li your own little community. That's cool. Yeah. Right and then, yeah, yeah but it's, it's the bad, like, my favorite is, you know, the community. It's, it's so cool. Like. Yeah everybody loves tattoos you know like right? they're, know. they're such a part of like the families like how many like entry into like the family rituals have i done you know like, <laughs> that's it's so cool. cool yeah you see their kids and you're yeah. touching their kids yeah and that's it's cool. great for like for business too because you know it's generational tattooing mm -hmm. you know you get to yeah. tattoo on the mom the dad the kid turns 18, right. has a kid, you know, has, you know, if you're alive long <laughs> enough, you might tattoo on him. I don't know if I'll make it that long. But. <laughs> Do we, now that we're talking about that, you have um, three kids. Yeah. And uh, two are boys, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the girl too. I mean, yeah. do, do any, but that oldest is a boy. He's yeah. what, six? Five. Five? Yeah. Do they ever, do you ever see any of like their interest in art? Oh and, yeah, big time. Yeah, They're all my kids are pretty, shop kids, so yeah, yeah. That's totally. <laughs> my kids, you know, um, dude, they've always wanted t t tattoos drawn on them. Yeah, they're always like, I, I would you I do make, their first tattoo if they ask you? Definitely, like at 14. No, at 13. No, they're gonna. No. <laughs> what, how old are you gonna be? 18. Somebody? Really? Yeah. What if they're like, oh, I want to get tattooed? What? Yeah. When did you get your first tattoo? I was like, I was like almost eighteen, you know. Shut but, up. Yeah. So if I they mean my first you, real one, yeah, really, yeah, was Uncle Andy. I I told him I was eighteen. We get this question all the time. Yeah. They're like, "What if your kids want to get a tattoo at like fifteen or 16? Yeah, and I'm over it. Really? Yeah, yeah no. Oh my god. Yeah. God. Yeah, I just really? don't. I think it's I more magical. Think, I know, but yeah. what, what if they're like, changed. gonna? What if they're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna get it somewhere else? Oh, then, you get their ass beat. No, I'm just kidding. They're going to come, yeah, come home and their whole room's going to be in the front yard. <laughs> My yeah. daughter's 10, so I'm always like wondering because I know those years are going to come pretty quick. And I'm like, dang, I hope she doesn't ask me when she's 16. Nah. <laughs> so, no. Tell her no, yeah. right? Yeah. No, no, it's her too. I don't yeah. want to. I want them to Wait feel the feeling of like. Yes, I'm finally 18. Yeah. I get to get this tat. And you like, how many times have you tattooed on the young ones yeah. that come in with their whole family, 
<laughs> no, and there's eight people designing this tattoo with oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then they have to have a handhold. Yeah. You know, and I'm not into that. You I know? haven't. It's just not my thing. Yeah, I haven't tattooed an underage in, fuck, years. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, I tattoo a lot yeah. of mom. Yeah. <laughs> I tattoo yeah. a lot of older people now, so yeah. I haven't done that. I'll but... only do it for, like, family friends. Like, yeah. you know what the, I mean? The underage. They really, that's the only time I'm doing that. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. So you're they're gonna wait. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my yeah, kids yeah. are gonna wait. <laughs> I mean, they're young. Or they're gonna go the... get a busted ass oh, one and learn them why I said they should have waited. Exactly. Exactly. Right. How many cover up tattoos have you been doing? Jeez. Oh my god. <laughs> pay the bills. <laughs> that's, that's I know. Yeah. yeah, but then that pays the bills too. Yeah. yeah, that is very true. Yeah. That is very true. Let's talk about Malu. I know she's like a very um, important part in your life yeah. and kind of just. Talk about how, like, she played a role in, you know, getting, I know, getting Sundance. I mean, this oh, is yeah. kind of like your baby, too, with her, I feel. Totally. So, yeah, Malu has always been a real big inspiration to me, you know? Yeah. Her, where she comes from, her family is, like, I, they're just amazing. Amazing family of traditions and culture and, and love mm -hmm. and, like, strength it's, it's like crazy and when i met her i could feel it you know before i even <laughs> met them that's cool and um so yeah she's my you know she's definitely my hugest inspiration and, right? and with, with sundance you know was like babe am i am i gonna do this and she's like why of course well, like let's do this yeah. what are we waiting for let's Fuck yeah. like you know you're too far you know, mm -hmm. and I was, it was too far. It's an hour and a half of a drive from Makah to Wahiwa. And you know what I mean? Let's, I just, I don't want to be away from, like that. You know what I mean? If something happened, you know, and, yeah. and, um, and just, I think she felt it, like the burning in me too, to like, to kind of just do my thing and just, just experience so much showcase my yeah. way you know yeah, of doing yeah, yeah. the the traditional thing you know and mm -hmm. yeah she was 100 percent on board she wasn't even phased by it she helped that's me so, so cool. much that's yeah. why I, I always tell people too like in order to succeed and and how that you just need that support system yeah and once you have that it's like you can do a lot of things yeah right Definitely. and i do see that i remember when I remember when you were talking to me about that and then I met her and then I went to your guys' wedding. Yeah. Like, everything, I was like, fuck, man, this is what you deserve. Oh, you thanks. know? And that's like, too, like, I'm so, it's just like, so, I love that you're my first guest because yeah. it's like, we, we, like you said, you know, we're far, we haven't seen each other in a yeah. while and I haven't, it's so nice to just like catch up. Yeah, and, it's just like normal. And like, I'm, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, I really did believe so much in you. Thanks. I feel like when we were apprenticing too, like yeah. there was so much I felt you deserved. Thanks. And now Thanks. that you have all this, I'm yeah. like, fuck, what a perfect person. <laughs> Someone who's come from so much challenges to creating this, just this life. Like it's such a beautiful story. And I think it's such a beautiful inspiration Thanks. to so many people. Like yeah. as much as maybe like you don't know that or you don't hear that or whatever, like it really is. Like, I appreciate I, that. I love that. And I talked to Javi. Javi's like, fuck, man. And we were like, should he be my first? And, and you're like, yeah, because oh, he's fucking, he's <laughs> so <is>. cool. <laughs> yeah, like, and, you know, I feel the same way about you. Like, when I think about, like, I look at this Cobra tattoo you did so many years <laughs> Dude, ago. Oh I just God. burned it on my Harley Davidson pipe. But, <laughs> I mean, it's one of my favorites. Should we, and, like, videotape that? <laughs> should yeah. we, like, get in close yeah. on the... On my Cobra, this, I was, did this in 2010, like, one of my yeah. first fucking <laughs> traditions. It might have even been 2009. Right, right, so, yeah, yeah, but it was like, fuck yeah, do this on me. I was like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah it took a long time, but it still fuck, looks I know, great. right? This oh is a burn God, right here. Dude. This is, I just did this, so. I can't was, believe, but, it, like, it's but, still there. Right. Like, I can't believe that. That's so cool. But, like, you're, you're, uh, you, you pushed hard. <laughs> You know? And you were young, and that was the thing that really caught my like brought to yeah, my attention was like, oh, I better fucking like, <laughs> like take it more serious. Like, here's this beautiful young girl who's, you know, 
she's coming up at the same time, pretty much. She, it's like, this this is what you're against. Like, you know what I mean? I, I had the love for it. Yeah. You know, I yeah. grew up in tattoo shops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, um, but I didn't have like that, like like seriousness yeah. like until really i i i i, I, I say I it to people to. all the time yeah i had to you did you, you fucking I mean, I was you the have only to. girl you in there and then right. like and that was you know a while ago that was like <sighs> you know almost 15 years ago right. or you know just about that and there wasn't as many women in it no. especially that were like that young yeah so it was like, it was cool. It was, it was like, oh shit, okay, how and many you know, line drawings did she do today? I wasn't about to walk in in a hoodie, so like, yeah. obviously when people would see me, they're like, she better be putting in work, like, yeah. or, at, or at right, least, right. in my head, I felt that was the thought all the yeah. time, and I think that's why I was like, fuck, I need to take this serious, you Yeah, know? And, and he did. <laughs> I can vouch for you. <laughs> Thank you. I was there. <laughs> I was there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All you want to say now is good thing. <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure man okay so i kind of also want to talk kind of about okay yeah we did already talk about a little bit about how you navigate being like that's one thing about being a parent and navigating your own business like that's is it nice. difficult did you find it difficult or was it kind of easier because you have like your partner who like helps a lot or like what okay. like for us like me and javi it was kind of hard yeah. So like it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. How is it's, it being like a dad and like yeah. okay, now I have to run this business. Yeah. I think so like when I started the business, I only had one kid, right? And then the business got busier yeah. and then I had another kid. Yeah. And then the business got busier and I had another kid. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, and then I you know, unfortunately you have three now. I lost a couple guys, you know, and and then it was trying to maintain that same like to feed the mm-hmm. beast you right, know what I mean exactly. they keep coming and it's just like that was hard to figure out the balance and then now when I'm you know but you end up figuring it out the business side I think but the thing that I struggle with the most by far in my life is like trying to be a good dad like trying yeah. to mm-hmm. not like with them especially since I had Lopaka my third it's like Dude, all these things that I thought were more important in the tattoo world, tattoo is everything. Mm -hmm. It was everything. It gave me everything. It's everything I leaned on, you know, but then you have this family and it's just like, holy crap, this is the most amazing thing in the world. But you're battling the love for tattoo and the love for your kids and your wife. And it's like... Mm -hmm. Holy shit, like something's got to give. Something's got to give. So, and it can't be the family, you know what I mean? It's it can't not in my situation. It, 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 like so I'm trying to not let go a little bit of tattoo, but um really break down and balance my when I am in tattoo mode, work mode or or paint or drawing whatever, then I have to be not fucking around like mm-hmm. because I don't have as much time to do this anymore yeah and the kids it's like I gotta be there for the kids and like oh. man if I if I get an appointment that goes past you know 6 30 <laughs> and I'm not gonna tuck in my yeah. kids yeah. fuck I'm, I'm pissed I, I, I don't feel good I'm yeah. mad at, I'm not mad at the customer but I'm mad at the situation right. that I didn't um, plan, plan better yeah. and mm-hmm. And it's just a shitty feeling. So now it's like, no, I make sure I leave every day at six. So I'm home. Nice, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and uh, But that's definitely the hardest thing for me. Like, yeah, like it's I, dancing the family. Yeah. yeah, and like I've always had kind of a problem with anger too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's like uh, you can get angry, you know, like at the, at the life, you yeah. know, and then you're fucking irritated at home and you're you're not you know what I mean so that's the struggle so but you know I it's all everyone's dealing with right that. Yeah. You know, I don't see and how you like, couldn't unless like, you just were like oblivious and didn't give a shit about <laughs> stuff but right. like I think that's what'll make us great parents you know right. and, and great tattooers like exactly. if because we, we'll be like okay well, you know like I only have this time to utilize so I'm gonna give it my all you know here and then here 
And then you got to have your hobbies too, which, you know, I mean, right? keep me it's sane, just, you know, <laughs> exactly. for sure. Yeah, because you do spend a lot of time in the water as well too. Yeah. Water, you still surf? Surf, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, you dirt bike a lot too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot, yeah. Uh, but so then you've also hurt yourself a lot during that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, Your it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. One other thing I wanted to touch on is you're starting to do a lot of more guest spots I've seen and mm. a lot of um, traveling. So how has that been? And do you plan on doing any more traveling? Um, anything kind of like not in the next month, like any new future for the rest of the year or yeah. guest spots or conventions? Um, yep. Yeah. At the end of this month, March, I'll be in San uh, Salt Lake City, Utah for the Salt Lake City convention, which is super sick. Is this your first convention away from home or? This is my second. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Last year, Gordon took me, Gordon McLeod, and um, that was amazing. You know, being under his wing has been really inspirational and it's been like like a second apprenticeship later in my life. Yeah. It's fucking so awesome. So say who that is for some people who may not know who Gordon is. Uh, Gordon McLeod, he's a... You should know who he is <laughs> if you're a tattooer. <laughs> for you them. Know, he also Rath. known as Wrath. Yeah, yeah, so look him up. You'll blow your mind. Right. Um, but... I am. I'm going with him, and then um, I'm going to go to New York with uh, Smith Street Rod and Gun Club guys. Oh, Those cool. guys are like family to me. They've been so nice, Bert and Eli and Connie and Ian and Fergus. Sick. And Manny and Dylan. <laughs> great, great people. So much aloha comes from them. I can't even tell you how many people come to Sundance because of them oh so it, it's sweet. crazy cool. you know and, that. and and it's that's what it's all about I, I don't really to be honest i don't really want to be a traveling tattooer i like, know it's hard it's difficult I, I think yeah i just miss my kids man i don't like a lot of old schoolers you know before me told me like dude just don't do what i did you know don't be away from them so much that yeah. you know you can't get it back. Yeah. You know, tattooing is mm. awesome, but it all it'll be right where you're at. You don't have to go anywhere and do it. Like that's that's just me though. You know what I mean? I'm not trying yeah. to yeah, yeah, yeah. like some people love it, you know yeah, what I mean? And they balance it that. great, like Gordon, like an amazing yeah. father, an amazing and traveling artist. Yeah, I traveling mean, artist. Bro, yeah. it's crazy. And the amount of stuff he does with his family, it's 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 very cool. And for me, I'm just I'm, I kind of just want to be at Sundance and yeah. just go home at <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> but I will be, I will, I'm going to try and go to New York every year. And, oh, yeah, because that was and, another, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I've all, like, that place was just so cool. Yeah, I love New York. I want to yeah. go to one. Like, I've been, but I want to go to a tattoo one day. It'd yeah. It's sick. It's cool. There's so much history and just feel it Fuck it's yeah. like everybody loves tattoos too and they like the kind that i like to do, <laughs> yeah yeah so. yeah <laughs> the color traditional yeah, too yeah. yeah i feel there's a lot of there okay so um these are going to be my like last questions i'm going to ask all of my um guests so the first one is going to be since we live in a world so i mean i feel like there's just so much coming to us all at once sometimes what keeps you inspired what keeps that alive, the inspiration? I feel like some days it's hard. Yeah, it is. It's hard. You know, uh, I I get inspired every day, very much so by like being a dad and um, kind of um, wanting to do things right. You know, and then and then with for tattoo, it carries over the same. It's like now that I'm like saying, okay, here's my shop, you know, like, well, I, I just, I care. I feel like that's a lot of responsibility in the tattoo, uh, you know, religion and mm -hmm. like that I have and I want to do the right thing. And that's inspiring, you know, to like stay on my toes with like my art, you yeah, know? Yeah. 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 You still and, pumping and, out that art. Right. And, uh, you know, just other tattooers really you know like 
and just uh, the old guys. I really am inspired by like how it must have been to be like tattooers back then and the, just to make art like you know Bert Grimm and, without all the nonsense out like right. just <laughs> no there's no uh, very little um, reference back then you know yeah. they kind of made that whole mm -hmm. style and just from simplifying everyday stuff and their imagination and I, I'm inspired by that you right. know I have books every day you know and like just waking up in hawaii man I fucking this place since i was a, I can remember being so just in awe of it you know and just being always thought like oh man i'm, I'm fucking proud to be from here you know and <laughs> and this place like and it's just it's culture and, and then you know the native hawaiians and like it's just so real. It's like, and it's so like raw still, yeah. you know, and it's just, that's inspiring to me. Like, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, the other one is, what advice would you give anyone who wants to start tattooing now? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Be real. It's okay. I'm just kidding. And I'll just, I'll just say, you know, no. like, it's a wonderful thing and it's very special to a lot of a lot of people so don't like if you're if you're not how should i say it you know i'll tell you what here's what you do if, <laughs> if you want to be a tattooer right now then you should go start getting tattooed mm. don't go someplace and ask questions about how did you get started da, 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 da. go and get fucking tattooed <laughs> Go get tattooed all over your body. <laughs> Not where everybody can see it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Go get yeah. it in the spots that are really painful and and feel the connection that you have to the magic and, and, and feel how it feels to be in a shop and, and like put yourself there. Like do the research. Like exactly. you know, but don't start doing it if you don't get tattooed. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> also, if you're gonna do it, you know then take it serious and, and, and respect the shit out of it mm -hmm. because the bottom line is, is it'll wean you out yep. so fast, yeah. you know? I, I mean, nowadays there's a lot of people, you, you could like maybe make like a shitty little living if you're not like a hundred percent in it, I feel like, yeah. you know, but just like there's shitty electricians, shitty plumbers, you know what I mean? That's true. Or you could be like, give it what it really deserves, you know? And if you if you don't want to do that, if it's too much, then maybe it's not, not for, for you. you, exactly. you know? Like, but get tattooed for yeah. sure. Please. <laughs> cool. Okay. And then before I ask the last one, um, I wanted to ask you who were your top five artists that you look up to? Oh. I know. I'm sorry. I should have put sorry. that in. <laughs> but now sorry. that we're talking about, and I and I literally just thought of this question yeah. because I want some names to be thrown out there that people can be like, oh shit, I've never heard of that person. I want to look them up. And cool. those people were like the older people that, you yeah. know, the, the whole reason why I wanted to make this podcast is I want these names to be heard yeah. and I want people cool. to fucking look them up. Yeah, I, I definitely. So like, <laughs> Know your history. Right, yeah. And, you know, so for me, my top five is probably like Percy Waters, like, Burt Grimm, mm -hmm. uh, Bob Shaw, uh, you know, Dennis Cockle, uh, Les Skews. Um, she's <laughs> that was fine. Tony, po <laughs> Tony Polito. You know? Yeah. Um, Owen Jensen. Sick Alex. And Jerry and Ed, for sure. Yeah. Ed, you know, the king. Sick. Yeah. But yeah, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I know, yeah. Some people might, you hear, they hear that and they think of like a brand or some shit. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah. okay, cool. So the last question is if you can, um, if you wanted to say anything that you wanted to promote anything coming up, um, if not, then where people can find you, your Instagram handle, anything like that you want to tell oh, everyone yeah. else. 
Uh, well, if you're in Salt Lake City and want to get a tattoo, <laughs> that would be cool. I'll be there March 29th and 30th, 31st at the convention. Um, you can find me every day pretty much at Sundance Tattoo in Waianae. You know, <laughs> right there. It's the end of the road. The last tattoo shop you can find at the end of the road. So. And what, um, what's your handle for that? Uh, oh, my Instagram is Uncle Bud. Uncle Bud. That's my personal one. <laughs> Check out my stuff on there and my family. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and my shop is just at Sundance Tattoo. Perfect. Yeah. It was so great yeah. having you here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's great thank to you be so here. Much. I'm not as nervous now. <laughs> yeah, I'm really talking about it.